So you get out on this rocky material and it feels like rock to your hand, but it feels like very porous rock. Like there's a lot of empty space in this rock. Parts of it crumble away under your weight as you're climbing up it. And mm -hmm. you can't see the anchor. The chain from the ship just descends directly into this material. And in fact, looking at it, the anchor chain isn't made of chain either. It's just made of this same rocky, porous material. And looking up the length of it, you can see tendrils of this stuff wrapping around, leading all the way up to where it enters the water. So, uh, is there any way, like, can I... With the nature of this magic, is there anything I can do to, like, either figure out how fast this is going to happen or do something to, like, interrupt it aside from physically breaking the chain or whatever? Uh, you can try to physically break the chain. Oh, no, I, I'm completely confident I'm incapable of that. I mean, this is a big anchor for a ship, right? Well, that's the thing. Is it you? what you thought was an anchor chain because they threw it mm -hmm. over the side of the ship? It looked like one, but it's actually made of this same brittle, porous material... Than this as the stuff you're climbing on right now. All right, let's uh, let's just put put a bullet in it point blank. Okay. I'm gonna need Scrappy to make me a Constitution saving throw. You got it. Who big roll? Well, kind of big roll. Uh, Scrappy gets a nineteen. Okay, it's going to be 19 points of uh, necrotic damage. To the Scrappy? Yes, uh, which okay. you can cut in half for making the save. Here's what happens, is you hold the gun, you blast through the stuff, and it just, it, it has no difficulty destroying this material. You just kind of destroy it in a cloud, and for a moment, the chain, like, lists away from you, uh, swaying just in the mild current of the harbor. But in that moment, you feel something jump from the chain into you, like into, not into your body, but you feel it kind of snake down and around you, around your armor, and then into the coil of rope around your waist. And you spin around, and one of these tendrils, moving tendrils that you've been seeing just under the surface of the mud, snaking, spiraling around the entire length of the rope, and then you see it hit Scrappy, and there's the, the jolt of it. You see him wince in pain and throw his head down and buck backwards for a moment. And then it's over. You've broken the chain. It's listing away from this mass of material. And after that one jolt, Scrappy more or less looks fine now. So what's what's left of the chain after that? It's just dangling. From, it's just dangling from the ship. You've and been... can I uh, make an arcana check to see if that interrupted the flow of magic at all? Uh... I think a perception check, actually. Sure. That's a 22. Okay. Watching it for a few more seconds, uh, the chain kind of comes to a rest. So now it's about five or six feet away from you. Uh, it's still dangling in front of you, straight down from the ship instead of at a very slight angle now. And watching it, you see material growing along the chain these little tendrils kind of spiraling down adding to the material of the chain and at this rate you think in another couple of hours maybe it will just reestablish itself down on the harbor floor it'll make contact okay. again in a different place okay hey so, sorry 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 had a there's a bit of an emergency uh is alex dead almost scrappy took some necrotic damage but we're fine otherwise okay so Alex is climbing up on top of the evil rocky material. What? Play, and he broke and he broke the chain connecting to the ship's anchor. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. See, so that's what you get for letting him leaving him alone, right? He he's he, he's fine. He's got this. So Gus, from your yep. from your position, you see this rocky material that previously the anchor chain had gone down into. Uh, there's now a sinkhole around it where the harbor, uh, the floor of the harbor gave way a foot or two. And Alex passed his strength save to not get buried. 
but then he jumped out and climbed up this rocky material and he's blown apart part of the chain he i've has... got a rope tied to scrappy who's hanging back yeah he's tied off to scrappy uh so yeah alex mm -hmm. what's next uh i mean i think that's all that answers most of the questions i had for the moment what about you gus well, Gus, from your uh, position... After I, after I blew a hole in the chain, it started reforming, but... Since you're closer to Scrappy, because Scrappy has this rope tied around him. Uh-huh. And you watched, once, as soon as Alex blew the chain apart, one of these little moving tendrils shot down the length of the rope connected to Scrappy. And when looking now, the area of metal nearest to the rope, where it's tied off, is badly blackened and damaged the metal of scrappy the metal of scrappy uh i'm going to i guess cut the r rope oh i like that idea you, so you cut the rope i well okay so the other end of the rope is tied around alex up on this rocky material like is there any way that uh like how much of the rope is tied up to this uh how much of the rope is is this stuff on? It's not anymore. It was just one jolt came down, dealt some damage, and Scrappy. He's not in uh, constant peril oh, at the moment. It, it's, it's not just, okay. Okay, no. I, you okay, have no, firsthand. You're standing right next to him. You can see the extent of the damage that that one jolt dealt. Yeah. I'll uh, kind of make a uh, kind of wrap it up gesture to alex okay yeah alex will uh float down a little bit and start trudging his way back across pulling the rope around him alex give me one last arcana check yep yeah uh that's it let, let's spend another flash of genius that's a 15 okay and critically fail a skill check. When you get back and you see the extent of the damage that this, uh, that little jolt, that tendril that had shot down along the anchor, um, at the moment you blasted the chain apart, whatever energy, whatever negative energy that chain was feeding into the ground of the harbor looked for the path of least resistance to get down to the base. And that just happened to wrap around through you all the way down the rope and into Scrappy. It might not be perfect data, but if you got Scrappy back to your barge and mm -hmm. looked at the extent of the damage dealt to him and then made some adjustments for the material he's made out of versus the material the ground of the harbor is made out of, you might be able to put a timetable on this. How long is this ship going to take to disintegrate massive amounts of Dunfoss Harbor right out from underneath yep. the ship? Okay, that sounds great. So, when we get out of the water, I'll talk to Alex. So, what do you think? They're digging for something? I mean, I think they're necrotizing the ground itself. Would be my hmm. best assessment. Well, I mean, that does... The little bit I know about undead, that makes sense. They tend to taint the land, and things like vampires need special dirt, right? Right. Yeah, something like that. So uh, when you guys get out of the water and you take the rope off of Scrappy, there's just this ring around his midsection that's just badly miscolored. Where this jolt got discharged into his body. All right. Can we get back to the barge without getting arrested? Oh, yeah, no no problem. Okay. We're just, like, bitty hilling across the city. <laughs> Moss caps running around. Uh, so, before we get to evening action, because I know Lucius has some shenanigans that he wants to get up to, there is word waiting at the barge by the time you return, before your evening action, Alex, to, mm -hmm. uh, from your father, demanding your immediate presence and an explanation at the embassy. Now I'll ignore that. It's okay. My dad. So. <laughs> I thought, sorry, I thought it might be someone with some actual power. I like to think that, like, him, said that. 
Alex's desk has like these little boxes that he puts his messages in these envelope slots, and the ones for his dad just empty right into the fireplace. <laughs> He's like uh credit card, credit card, warranty department, letter from my dad. Trash. It's just this Rube Goldberg device that takes the envelope for all these pneumatic tubes and just shoves it out into the ocean. <laughs> So you're blowing off the uh, the ambassador. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's get some evening actions. So it is going to uh, require. Gonna... You're going to do the calculations. Yeah, Alex is going to spend the entire time studying the effect that that had on Scrappy. Okay. Do we have uh, enough information to present to the like? Like I think that that is the whole you know, uh, whatever is happening in the underwater is a thing that if the king doesn't know about it he needs to know now okay before before any of that let's let's just take it let's take a step back look at the bigger picture we just had we just had a big old chunk of what was a broken wall or was it silver bluff silver, silver bluff. bluff we have a we've had a we had a uh you know way back when when we were still greenhorns we had this whole issue in broken wall where things were get where, where the city is going to be destroyed then we had this thing where we had this explosion that took out half of civil bluffs now we got this thing that's trying to collapse the area or in and around the harbors somebody's somebody's got to have it out for dunfoss and it may even be multiple people I mean, if you expand that to multiple gods, I'm on I'm on board with this explanation. I mean, Dunfoss does kind of suck. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that eh. bad. Would you rather be in Sigil? I don't know. We didn't stay long enough. <laughs> we robbed the place and, and escaped town. So, Lucius, you are going to break Ooh. into Humberth Manor tonight? Yeah. Which... I think is what we've done to every city besides Dunfoss. We've Gus and Dunfoss. Gus, yes. Focus. Yes. Evening actions. Sorry. Evening actions. Uh, are, are do you, what do you guys think about like at least one of us? Do you want help, Lucius? Do you want me there, or do you want? I could or use do some you... assistance. Yeah, just to, some backup. Okay. All right. Okay, Lucius. Uh, Alex pulls the clips off his boots. You have boots of flying. We'll fly at your speed for four hours. And he pulls off a cloak. Well, it's a little bit small for you, but he throws it over your shoulder. You also have a uh, cloak of protection for plus one to saves and AC. And Scrappy taps you with the wand. Now you have a warding bond for, uh, I think, an hour. Gizzard. I'm, I'm really going to establish this wand as being Scrappy's gizzard. Yeah. Yeah. Spell gizzard. Spell gizzard. <laughs> Uh, the yeah, lizard, one hour. and Scrappy, will, I'll give, I'll send Scrappy with you to, with instructions to like stay relatively close. Well, he's going into the building. He's sneaking in. Oh wait, actually, what's the range on? I think Warding Bond. Oh, that won't work. Warding Bond has a sixty foot range. Like you can't break it. So never mind. No, sixty feet would probably be outside yeah. the. Yeah, he'll wall he'll just. House. Yeah. So. You can position Scrappy nearby, though, in case everything... Yeah, Scrappy will be, like, you know, 100 feet away in the nearest alley if you need help. He'll have orders to protect Lucius if Lucius comes running for him. So, Gus, are you going along and standing by with Scrappy as backup in case Lucius needs it? Yeah. And what is Connor doing? Connor wants to get a lead on Orzad Karn. So, he's going to start by checking out the open-air dojo. Going there in, in the evening? Yeah, great okay. tables. Uh, does Connor... I don't think you have any actual mechanical training in unarmed combat, but is this something Connor has ever done before? Like, do you have... Does Connor have any sort of connection to, like, martial arts or monk training? <laughs> no, I can't imagine he does. Okay. He enjoys a good punch. That's about it. Let's see, personal penniless. Lucius. Sir. If 
you will permit me to stall for time for a moment because Photoshop crashed. Yeah. <laughs> so the Humberth Manor is two floors mm -hmm. uh, plus some number of basement levels. You can't be sure how much. Uh, the servants have access to most of the areas of the house, particularly the one that you talked to. Mm -hmm. uh, she served bedrooms and things and helped out in the kitchens. Uh, so mm -hmm. she doesn't have direct access to the Duke's personal chambers, what he's using now that he's in town. The house has three wings. There's a central wing, then an east and a west wing, and two floors. You know that the room you're looking for is along the north wall of the second floor of the east wing. Along that okay. wall, you see three large, uh, like, ten-foot-wide bay windows, each of which that could be opened outward, but none of them are opened at the time that you arrive. And all you can see through them are large, heavy drapes. And uh, Lucius, one last thing. Go ahead and take an advance. Enhance ability agility for an hour before you leave. Agility? Dexterity, whatever. Okay. The same thing. <laughs> Lucius, okay. uh, do you have some way to, uh, if you need like a distraction or something, do you have some way to signal me? I have I have a uh, little Amshun, my uh my familiar. Okay. Leave the little Amshun with me and then if you need if you need a big noisy loud distraction to get away he will bite you. Uh I would rather he didn't. <laughs> So yeah, all you know for certain is that the room that the Duke was using uh, is his personal chamber, is second floor along the north, uh, along the north end of the east wing of Humberth Manor. Okay. You are flying invisibly. Uh... Yeah, boots. I have boots, but I don't have access to invisibility. So you're flying um, not invisibly. Yeah. Okay. So what's your approach like to the house? Um... There's no way I can. There's no other way I could suss out anything further. Um. Yeah, you yourself were not allowed into the house the other day. You spoke to the duke while he was out in his gardens. Yeah. But we're not granted admittance. Looking at my spell list to see if there's anything else that I have that could possibly give me a. Give me a leg up into here. You can cast detect important letter. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that on my list. Ah, it's too bad. Yeah. I think, it's in, the, I think it's in the Sword Coast Guide anyway. Yeah. Um. Shit. Hoping I, would, I was hoping I would get more accurate information as to where it is Wait, from the, you know exactly the where lady. It is. It's on the north side of the house. On the second it, floor in the east wing. There are three oh. large bay windows along that wall. I will, I will attempt to quietly open one of the bay windows. Uh, so which one? There's Center. The center one. Okay. Yeah. So all you can see through these windows at this time, uh, 
Actually, I, I will say there's quite a lot of light emanating from the first floor of the house in the center wing. Mm -hmm. There's a, like a large curved area that's mostly windows that looks into uh, like a large ballroom area where they have a large grand piano set. So when you're approaching the house, getting up and over the wall and sneaking across the gardens... Uh, you don't see any activity in there, but the windows themselves are open and you can see into the room. This gives you a good view, kind of everything in the center of the first floor, down to where the main doors of the manor would be. You're not heading quite that far because you just want to go up into the east wing, yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to take that. I want to stay out of line of sight of anybody who might be. Let's start with a stealth check, please. Windows. I am now. I have advantage on this. Thank you, Alexander. Twelve. Twelve? Mm-hmm. And what's your passive perception? Passive perception is an 18. Okay. You get over the wall of the house. Uh, and you're making your way, sneaking down towards... Are you, are you flying or are you sneaking down along the ground right at this point? Down along the ground. Okay, so you're sneaking up to the back wall of the house with the intention to fly up to the window from there. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As you make it to that position, looking up over your shoulder to the left with your back against the wall, so up towards the central part of the house, on the second mm -hmm. floor, you see an open window and for a moment, you see somebody turn away from it. It's entirely possible they saw you coming across the yard. You have no way to be sure. I'm going to cast darkness into that room. I think I can do that. Hang on. <gasps> Magical darkness spreads from a point you choose within range to fill a 15-foot radius sphere for the duration. Up to 10 minutes with concentration. Are you able to cast it behind total cover? Because you, you've got to cast it through the pane of the window. Oh. I didn't realize it. The, win oh, yeah, the window's yeah. not open. You just saw a shape for okay. a moment out of the corner of your eye turning away from the window heading back into the house. So it's possible they saw you. First or maybe floor, they second floor. Second floor. First floor. Uh, okay. Well, I might as well push on. Uh, no, I'm not going to cast darkness, and I'm going to move up to the uh, move up to the window. So the large bay windows uh, arch at the top. Two large uh, windows with glass panes, and on the inside of the window, all you can see are heavy drapes held in place so you can't see into the room on the other side the windows themselves could be opened outward from the inside but the mechanism for doing so is on the inside of the window so go ahead and well, how are you going to get how are you going to try to open the window from the outside do you have thieves tools or something similar i have thaumaturgy thaumaturgy would do the trick yep and uh, before I do this, I'm going to send an instruction to Little Amshun mm -hmm. to to nip at uh, at Gustavus's leg. Gus, ow! Lucius is terrible. Familiar bites you. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I guess that means he wants a distraction. So, uh, how we're kind of we're stationed in an alley, uh, a, far, a little bit away from you the house. Guys how far are... away? Uh, in between a couple of large buildings in a small alley section, you're looking south at the north wall of the mansion house. A few moments ago, Lucius went up and over this wall because uh, that's the closest point, entry point to the window where he wanted to go in. Okay. And how far away? Uh, can't be more than maybe 50, 60 feet from your position as the crow flies. Okay. I am going to... Uh, can I double time it to the wall? Like, to, to the base of the wall where Lucius went yeah, on? Yeah, to, to the base of the wall. Sure. And then I'm going to 60 feet straight up, uh, angled to be kind of, I don't know. Uh, so the opposite side of the house. So like Lucius is on the north end of the house, right? Yes. 
on the south side of the house, I want to in in the air where like nothing is going to get damaged. I want to cast shatter. Shatter. Can you cast shatter into just like a point of empty space? A sudden loud ringing noise, painfully intense, erupts from a point of your choice within range. And what's the range on it? 60 feet. See so basically can... 60 feet in the air on the south end of the building. The south end of the building, that's too far away. You're outside the north wall. You've probably huh? got a good 30, 40 feet from the wall to the house. And then you've probably got, let me count here, maybe another 120 or so before you're at the front of the house. It's a, I mean, like, house. like, 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 can I, I make my way around? Like, obviously, like, Lucius is, I'm expecting Lucius to not make his move until the, because I, I told Lucius I was going to do a very loud and obvious, you know, okay. uh, thing. So you want to circle around to the other side of the manor. Right. You can do that, but you're coming around the walls that not only encompass the house, but also the vast gardens. So you're looking at probably 200 feet of movement until you get all the uh, way around the south wall. Is that okay? You can make that uh, in maybe 30 seconds or so. But Lucius okay. will have a couple tense moments on his end. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to go. Okay. Lucius, are right. you holding still until Gus makes his move? Yeah. And your passive perception is 18? Yes. Okay. So, Gus, you circle around the front of the wall, the, the south side of the wall, mm -hmm. and make sure this shatter goes off like, over the gardens in front of the house, yes? Right, yes, on the south end of the house. Like, the opposite end of where he is. Okay. Basically. Try and draw attention. So, coming around the south wall, and you cast this shatter spell, and Lucius, I mean, you hear the spell go off. Just as Gustavus described, you hear the uh, the sudden loud ringing noise, painfully intense. And Gus, from your position, you can start hearing the faint shouts of people on the other side of the wall in the garden as they come out to investigate. Huh? Time to go. Lucius, you're up. Cast Thaumaturgy to open the uh, window. Okay. And the windows open outward. The drapes mm -hmm. start blowing slightly in the wind. Yeah. And then push past the drapes. Drop down inside. Push past the drapes into a music room that looks like mm -hmm. it's in disuse. Uh, but there is some very... Uh, ornate very large instruments like there's a large standing harp you do see a piano in the corner half covered with uh a furniture cloth along the south wall of the room you see several other racks of just a collection of high-end instruments this is something that some of the people in house humberth kind of have a reputation for this so looking to your left along the wall is the bay window closest to the corner of the room you haven't opened that one you chose to open the center one and then in front of you is a door exiting the room so two of uh, the windows from outside led into this room and you do it does not strike you as being the duke's writing chambers then i'm going to listen at the door to see if there's anybody out in the hallway give me a perception check please Sixteen. Sixteen. You do hear footfalls and voices on the outside. There is some commotion inside, wanting to know what the sound was. And you do hear one of these voices, an older woman, uh, mention that it sounded like a shatter spell. And she, like, it sounds like magic, and then she describes exactly the kind of magic that you've seen Gus use on several occasions. Okay. I'm going to hold short there until I hear the footballs go away. After a they few moments, the conversation ends and you hear people 
uh, heading down the hallway, the woman you heard, she sounds more aggravated than anything. Uh, but then after a few moments, you hear a door open and close in the hallway on the other side. And things never fall silent because if you're listening intently, you can hear orders being barked further on in the house. But you don't hear anything just on the other side of the door. Looking at the crack under the door, though, you do see some light coming in from the hallway. There is illumination out there. Crack the door, look outside, look out in the hallway. Uh, you go to crack the door and you realize the door is locked. You're able to unlock it from your side, but if you were coming mm -hmm. in from the other direction, it would probably require a key. Yeah, I'll unlock it from this side. Unlock it. You open it up and peer out. And you're looking south along a hallway. And at two places along this hallway, you see what look like magical torch sconces. You see these sometimes in higher end uh, manors in Dunfoss, where instead of using like a, a candle or a traditional torch or something, they'll literally just have a continual light kind of situation. Mm-hmm. And so nice art pieces, but also very functional. Looking off to your right, uh, how many, well, looking south, one, two, three, four, five, six doors along this hallway, including the very end of the hallway in front of you, all of which are closed. Looking to your right, you're looking down the perpendicular hallway. So it kind of comes to the part where you're standing, turns 90 degrees. You're standing at the corner of this L-shaped hallway. Mm -hmm. And there is a door to your immediate right that would go into the room the third bay window from outside connects to. In yeah, that direction, have... you're seeing considerably more light. And here and there, you are seeing motion mm -hmm. as well. The, to, toward the room that, to the north end of that... Uh that hallway you'd be looking west because it's off to your right when you face south you're seeing down the hallway where the continual light sconces are if you turn mm -hmm. and look west you're looking down perpendicularly the other hallway that makes the l shape where you're standing okay i want to i want to try and get into that room that's the opposite the other bay window that's not attached to the music room okay and it's not far it's just the next door down the hall you sneak down there and take a couple steps and try the door, and it is locked. Okay. Uh... Shit, I'm going to have to... <laughs> um... Gustavus, uh, Little Anshun bites you again, and... Lucius is going to retreat back into the music room. Okay. He's going to have to approach it from the outside. He's going to have to approach that last bay window from the outside. Ow. So yeah, Gus, okay. he waits a minute. You feel the bite again. All right. And this time I'm going to go to the... Uh, not from the same side, so the east side of the building, I guess. And do this similar thing. Okay. At this point, you do notice that there are some house guards uh, in the garden. If you're listening very closely, you can hear them on the other side of the wall. This time, when you make the sound, you hear a call go out from inside the garden that says, The lady thinks it's a harmless magic. We shouldn't be paying attention to it. Make sure we have men at the gates and all the doors. Hey. So the distraction worked the first time, but will not work the second. Then I am going to uh... All right, plan B light property damage. <laughs> uh this time I'm going to cast Yes. What's in front of me on the east side? Like, what is... We're How kind of, far away from the wall at, is the house? You're kind of standing at the corner of the outer wall. 
and mm. there's a vast garden in between the walls in the house. If you look down the length of the wall, halfway down are the large gates going into the garden. Uh, this, where you see men are coming out and being posted at the side. Uh, I would say at least 50 or 60 feet at the narrowest approach from the gate to the actual front of the house through the garden. Okay, so the garden, mm -hmm. full of flammable plants, right? Sure. <laughs> okay. I'm going, is there anything? I'm sorry, I was going to say it's, interesting It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Might just I be guess. an inf garden full of inflammable plants. Anyway. Uh, Gus is going to... Uh... Pull out this scroll he has for uh, cone of not cone of cold. Uh, the fire, the level one fire spell that does a cone. Uh, burning, burning hands. hands burning hands. Yes, thank you. I forgot. I thought you just knew that one. I switched it out for uh, thunder wave. Is what I did. It's yeah, a, it's a good. Uh... It's a good alternative. So if you want to ignite like a hedge or something using burning hands, you're uh -huh. going to have to get on the inside of the wall. Burning hands won't do anything through the wall. Uh, okay. You could scale the wall, but you know that men on the other side are vigilant right now. Right. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, can I get close enough to the house to actually be within... Can I, is the wall close enough to the house to actually be within 60 feet of the house? Not on the southern edge, no. On the eastern, western edges, certainly. Right. Okay. I want to go to the... one of the, the To the... Uh, which side is closer to where Scrappy is? Uh, the east edge of the wall, where the east yes. wing is. That's also where Lucius is breaking in. Oh, okay. Well, then I want to go to the western side. Okay. And I'm going to target the house directly with Shatter. What part of the house? Uh, the first floor. Okay. Ooh. Um, hmm. Well, actually, I can't see the first floor. The wall's in the way. Well, yeah, but like I said, uh, you can scale the wall and get good line of sight to anywhere along Okay, all right, the all right, all right. House. Just, uh, if you scale the wall, you risk being seen. Yes, and, uh... Uh, I want to angle the first floor where the 60 feet barely, and I mean barely, touches the windows. Like, where the, the 60 foot is like the edge of the bottom floor windows. I want to shatter the windows, on the, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to risk hurting anybody, anybody on the inside. First floor, north or side of the house, it. west wing. Is that, do I have all that right? Right. Okay, go ahead and roll the damage on that shatter spell. All right. Are you trying to, at any point in this to be stealthy? Like, do you care if you get seen when you get to the top of the wall? Uh, I mean, I'm going to try. Okay. Uh, what what do I need? I need D eights. Yeah. All right. That is six, seven, eight points of sonic of th thunder damage. Okay, and I want a perception check from you, please. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. That is a 21. So they have sent a patrol, a group of uh, men-at-arms, uh, to kind of walk the perimeter of the inner wall for a moment. And you're just about to hoist yourself up to the wall to throw this spell out when you realize they're coming up around the west wing of the house. If you were to jump up right now, you'd be spotted for sure. So you give it 20, 30 seconds. You hold off, just clinging to the wall. Until you think you've given them enough time to pass by. And sure enough, now when you hoist yourself up, you see them walking along the north end of the wall off to the east. Giving you clear line of sight to cast your shatter spell. As soon as you cast it, everybody's going to hear it and they're going to come running. Right. And you blow in. Again, there's these uh, three large windows on the first. and So six windows total. First and second floor 
of the manor house in the west wing and you just blow in two of them on the bottom floor the sound resonates throughout the air join with the sound of shattering glass and sure enough you just have time to look off and see the patrol turn around and come running when you let go and drop to the outside of the wall uh, all right so lucius from your position in the music room yeah you saw these men approaching along the north side of the house like one of them you saw glance up and seeing that the music room window had been opened but just before you realize oh i've screwed this up and they're about to come you hear the shatter go off and they turn and run away from you all right then yeah once that once once they're all facing away lucius is gonna kick on the boots again and fly to the other to the uh, other door to the other to the other window okay is it latched it's, to where I can yes, open it? Identical to the second to the one that you opened. Uh cast on maturgy. And sure enough, the window comes open. Push through the yep. drapes. Looking into this room, uh, you can see that this it's smaller than the music room you were in. Um and you can tell that none of the furniture in here is like a permanent fixture. Uh there's nothing opulent or ornate or even particularly heavy in here. It really looks like what happened was Duke Rune travels with this set of furniture so wherever he goes whether he has to set up a pavilion somewhere or uh, wherever he is he's able to kind of inhabit his space himself with his own writing table and chair he's not using this as a sleeping quarters though and sure enough you find the only object in the room that looks like a desk it has a drawer in the front and opening up uh first of all you find some amount of money are you stealing from this man absolutely not so you're stealing all of his money absolutely not all of it right none of it okay looking in the drawer uh there's like a little stack of correspondence all of it has been uh sliced open with the <clears throat> extremely expensive looking gold-plated leather opener sitting in this drawer are you sure you're not going to take it hey hey birdie hey birdie <laughs> hey birdie no don't don't you dare we have enough treasure. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm triggered. So, at it's first two thinking, years. At first you're thinking there's 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 a probably 12 or 20 or so just different pieces of correspondence in here. Some written in the Duke's hand that have yet to be finished and sent off. Some that he's received. And at first you don't really know what you're looking for until you find one sealed in light blue wax bearing the sigil of a vanishing apple and it's already been opened so you don't have any uh reason to not just check it out and when you look at it yeah. it's written in script that you only recognize because alex speaks deep speech mm -hmm. so you can't read it but you recognize the alphabet it's written in as deep speech and it bears the sigil of a vanishing apple. Yeah, Lucius uh, Lucius snatches that up. Uh, yep. And he is going to jet out of the uh, out of the window. Give me a perception. What he's going to uh, perception. Eighteen. OK, so this is just making sure that you don't jet out of the window directly into a patrol of guardsmen that are coming around a corner. If if they do, if I if I did happen to do that, I'm I have I have darkness at at my disposal to just drop on their domes. Okay, but you don't have to because you rolled pretty well on your perception check. <laughs> and yeah, and then I will zoom. I will get back over the wall, hit, drop to the ground, and not meet meet up with uh, Gustavus until uh, I've. Uh, until, until I gotten clear of the thing, in which in which case, uh, little Amshun will, uh, Lamshun will lick the little bite mark that he uh, that he left on Gustavus. So his familiar is getting real handsy now. Yeah, I don't think I, you should buy me, you should buy me dinner first. So you guys are making your way away from the matter. You're not going to hang out there, I'm assuming. No, oh, no, no, absolutely not. Okay. Connor, physically, you're not much to look at, right? You've got like a seven strength or something. Yeah. You're kind of like this. That is a very... Yep. 
spindly little guy. Uh, <laughs> I prefer the term twink, but sure. <laughs> Excellent. I approve. That was awful. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go take a shower now. <laughs> also valid. It takes me like 20 minutes to take a shower, and anything less than 20 minutes doesn't feel like I'm clean. Uh, Connor. Still here. Orzad Karn is a Githzerai, and he wears... Uh, these very loose-fitting robes. Like, it's actually difficult to tell what the man's physical stature looks like because he just has this so much uh, cloth draped over his shoulder. His hair is stark white, and he only has it uh, on his cheeks and his chin coming down from his face, and then in a ring around the sides of his head. And the top is just paint bald. Uh, his skin is a very pale yellow, uh, you have met Githzerai before, obviously, you're acquainted with Numax, so, uh, but he's sitting there meditating in front of this, uh, these students, kind of going at each other, martial arts style, uh, sparring, learning various maneuvers, and so when you approach, it's just an open-air dojo, so it's essentially just a stage set up off of the ground, uh, with lanterns around the perimeter uh paper lanterns each one is painted with a sigil that you don't recognize probably something to do with the the magic school but when you approach some friendly men break off from the festivities uh coming over to welcome you did you bring any equipment with you weaponry uh yeah connor would have his bow have his equipment okay yeah and they, they welcome you up. They essentially kind of, uh, they offer you a cleansing water to drink. Oh, yeah, Connor will partake in the water. And they bring you over to where they have a cauldron sitting up on one corner of their dojo with a ladle in it. And you just take out this wooden ladle and it's filled with crystal clear water. And they tell you that it's brought down from the mountains where the monastery is that they uh while they're exercising they wouldn't deign to drink dunfoss in water <laughs> yeah i can i can see that especially connor would be familiar with the fact that mountain water would be fresh so okay. yeah and yeah essentially they're just trying to get a sense of why you've come like are you looking to do, to do some training, to exercise, uh, to learn to meditate, or have you come to commune with one of the flump seers? The, the, the flump seers? No, uh, I just want uh, to see where or is that Karn is, and if he's here, maybe strike up a conversation. Okay. I guess this is a question I wouldn't have asked anybody, but Connor came into this campaign halfway through. Does Connor even know what a flump is? Oh. Uh, no, I, I I don't think so, because uh, I determined that, for sci uh, that his knowledge of psionic things would be low to okay. almost none. Have any of the other members of the detective agency explained to Connor what a flump is? Almost certainly. <laughs> I mean, Gus would have been like, he would have pointed at the stupid sign Florian made, said, that's a flump. And then he also has it paste, painted on his shield, remember? <laughs> so, right, yeah. but that, that doesn't mean Connor knows what they are. I guess technically right. it doesn't really mean that any of you know what they are. Gus doesn't. <laughs> and he's been here all along. Uh, Connor, <laughs> how insistent are you? Because they tell you that Karn is in a state of dream space, uh, which is particularly important today because earlier he was summoned to an, uh, he was summoned to court to an audience with the king. Oh, why? Oh, why? Mm, okay. So how insistent uh, are you that you have to speak to Karin right now? 
<laughs> um well so okay connor wasn't expecting to uh, to actually meet karn mm -hmm. so if he was indisposed at the moment connor would not want to disturb that i mean that having been said yeah the, f the was it the flump seekers the flump seers the flump seers mm -hmm. Connor is very curious about the the, the flump seers because this is the second time the word flump he's countered the word flump and it is not in a detective agency context. <laughs> so as for uh, Orzad Karn being indisposed, I mean the man is sitting cross-legged with his palms open, facing up, resting on his legs, just in a state of meditation. Eyes are closed. Uh, you can't really tell whether he's aware of his surroundings at the moment or not. But he's sitting at one edge looking over the dojo and he has paper lanterns on either side of him uh, in a seat of what you can only think of as reverence. So whether that counts as indisposed or not, because he's definitely here and it doesn't look like he's doing anything. It's just he's you're, meditating. You're told he's in a state of dream space. State of dream space. <laughs> Uh, how important is achieving my goal here? It is always the most important thing. Huh. <laughs> no, we'll try tomorrow. Okay. But uh, if anyone... Connor would, would ask around if they know the nature of what he said at the court summons, if anyone is able to know that, or if it was like a private meeting between him and like the king. No, these guys are low-level students. They're just here to learn how to okay. kick and punch people. Okay. These guys are zero-level monks, kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh... Right. If Connor comes back tomorrow and he's still in this dream, dream state, then yeah, it's time to go pokey-pokey. Okay. Alex. You spend the evening in calculation. Yep. You want to know, based on the damage you saw that one tendril do to Scrappy, if the ship is sending like continuous waves of these things down into the earth, how long will it take before the whole structure of the harbor is compromised? Uh, so before I answer this question, we're going to have to establish what does Alex know so far as like the geology of the area? Uh, I think Alex actually has a pretty good amount of information about that, especially considering that if he needs to, he can go and uh, go to the Chartographer's Guild and actually look at any surveys that they've ever produced. Okay. So that'll be part of his action. So Alex has a good sense of like what the earth in and around Dunfoss is comprised yeah. of. What types of stone, yeah. like layers of clay or silt down underneath the water uh, before reaching bedrock soil composition, all this nonsense. You've got a pretty good grasp on all of it. Uh, did you take a sample of the brittle rock stuff? Back yeah. With you? Okay. Yeah, I would have done that. Make me a... Are you trained in both Arcana and History? Yes. All right. And uh, chartography is, Chartographer's Tools as well. Make either of those checks, Arcana or <laughs> History, your choice. Make it at advantage. Wow. Uh, and a cigarette. Uh, 23. Okay. So the type of stone you're looking at, by which I mean the material that you've pulled up out of the ocean, the, the clump that the anchor has set into, when you get it out of the water... It just looks like this dark gray material, like a pile of ash might look. Um, and you, it, it's relatively soft. Like, you can apply enough pressure to make it crumble in your hand if you had such a desire to do so. And it's very porous, almost like coral. And... I'm sorry, did you roll Arcana or History? That was Arcana. Okay. The reason it strikes you as interesting is because this type of stone is psionically charged. You personally aren't a psionicist. You're not trained in that sort of magic, so you don't know all the details. But 
you do know there are materials in the world that if subjected to psionic charge versus say a magical charge of some kind or an electric charge would respond in ways that to you would be incomprehensible you wouldn't be able to predict what might happen uh but the reason you know this is because this particular porous material tends to build up it tends to calcify around the outside of pools where elithids keep their god brains so an elithid colony will have one of these god brains which is literally a gigantic brain submerged in this psionically charged water and part of the elithid rep uh, reproductive cycle is that little elithid tadpoles are placed into this water with the god brain and they begin to eat each other and at the yeah. end of the harvesting season the last few that remain start evolving into full-grown elithids and as a as a side effect of having that much psionic energy at all times from this god brain the stone around will actually erode into this kind of calcified material that you're looking at here given how much damage scrappy took in that one moment and given that scrappy is probably much denser on average being made of iron than the layers of silt and uh clay that must sit beneath the harbor you would say that you probably have one week before this starts looking like a catastrophe. Oh, great. By this point in the evening, you're sure that the anchor that you had broken had made new contact with the ground and was starting the same necrotizing process. So that's fun. How much does Alex actually know about elithids? Um, not much more than, you know, just just the cultural stuff you would have picked up by being a deep gnome. Nothing specific beyond that. You don't have, like, the anatomy texts that they have in Volo's Guide? No. <laughs> it's never... He didn't dissect an elithid at... <laughs> no, that was not at part of life. his final. He didn't... He, he doesn't have... He didn't do too well in anatomy. But it makes sense now that the ship hasn't done anything it's just been sitting in the harbor for a couple of days there's been no new pronouncements come out of it there hasn't been any movement an attack hasn't started and it's because the attack is happening down in the harbor something is eating away at the ground and eventually within probably about a week they'll be able to open up an enormous sinkhole underneath high courts harbor to what end they might do this, you don't know, but you know it would cause a great deal of damage. And uh, you know that if they go deep enough, there is the Underdark to be concerned right. about. And I'm assuming that after you gain all of this knowledge, you're going to repair the damage to Scrappy? I mean, that's just an action. Okay. That's... That, that doesn't take any resources or time unless there's something special about the damage. Well, if you had done it before this point, there wouldn't have been any damage yeah, to yeah. examine. Right. Uh, is anybody doing a late night action instead of taking a long rest? Everybody's going to go back to the barge and sleep for the night? Elish is going to come back to the yeah. barge and he's going to hand, the, hand this note over to Alexander and say, this is something that I couldn't read, but I think this is what... Uh, this is what our uh, what our what our Lord Humberth is uh, concealing from us. Alex, mm -hmm. looking at the letter, and it is written in deep speech. Uh, it is a description of a plot to assassinate King Ten Sails, and it's essentially saying to duke rune that with enough resources which would be supplied by the duke they could accelerate this plot they could make it happen in a matter of weeks rather than a matter of months essentially the letter is saying hey you have a lot to gain by assassinating this pirate king because you're pretty much next in line for the throne 
Is the is there a specific list of resources? Uh, it's very vague in terms of what resources they wanted the dupe to supply, but I mean you can mm -hmm. surmise uh, probably coin and personnel. So there's no, it's not immediate. It wouldn't be something we could uh, immediately like investigate what he's been moving around to see if he's actually participating. Sounded like to when we when I went with Lucius, it sounded like he's not participating. He's just hesitant to go forward to the king because you know of what happened with Telesna Sap and the people that came forward to him during that. But towards the end of the letter, it gives. A time and a location. The time has already passed. This would have been a couple of days ago now. Uh, actually, a little more than that, probably. Um, not quite back to the magic game, because that was many months ago now. Uh, certainly before any of you got wrapped up in this plot. You have no way of noting if knowing if he went to that meeting, and the location of the meeting is just kind of a generic place in the city. It's not enough to give you a lot of information. What does give you some information is the sigil on the wax is the symbol of the vanishing apple, of the apple of time. End of the world's in five days, by the way. What? What? Five, end of the week? Next week? Lead with that. I have it marked on the calendar, see? Oh. Okay, well that's my bad then. Hey guys? What's a flump? <laughs> Gus holds up his shield. What is yeah, that? They're friendly, psychic, poison, spiky, tentacle things. Uh-huh. Did you know there's a whole group of people called the, 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 the flump seers? It sounds familiar. Yeah. They're on the mountains? No, they're over in... They're over in uh, Great Tables Park. Oh, well, I didn't know that. No. Yeah. You, you, you've never talked to them. No no one here has talked to them. The, Florian the probably Inc. had. Flumpf <laughs> Inc. Yeah. No one. No one Florian was entirely has, in charge of all, all things okay. Flump. Hmm. So let's go ahead and take the benefits of a long rest. Alex, go ahead and roll your <laughs> d20. <laughs> So is that the, was contribution. It's four days from now. Let me let me actually get this marked down correctly. No, so in, in roughly four days. No more than a week. So you okay. would say you you would want it to go past seven days from now. Seven days from today. I thought we had six day weeks, but okay. Oh, we do. I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. So six days from today. Don't help the DM. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important to the math of working out crafting things that a week is six days long. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so technically today is your dues day. Do any of you still have to pay dues? Lucius doesn't. No, Lucius, uh, doesn't. Lucius definitely doesn't. I'm going to blow it off if I do. Also, I have a 16 on my d20 roll. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and take the benefits of a long rest. We'll go ahead and take our break here. Take 15 minutes. Oh my god, 15 minutes is enough time to walk. Oh no, it's closed now. The, the food truck is closed. I can't go there anymore. They close at 3 on Yay. Sunday. So I'm not going to go spend $7 on a great sandwich or something. Instead, I'm going to go to my kitchen and, <laughs> like, I don't know, get a saltine or something. So I'm go going to the gas station, and I'm going to get some gas station food because I did not eat lunch. Gross. Get your coffee. Get your bagel. We'll reconvene here in 15 minutes.